As we all know, it's a big weekend. It's Canada's 150th. There you go. Happy birthday, Canada. We're talking about um, Canada's food heritage right now with a good uh, family member here on the show. Her name is Helen Charlebois, registered dietitian, nutritionist. How are you? I'm great. I am a family member. You are a family member. You've been here before. Yes, I have a are, few times. Thank are you excited you. for the big uh, weekend? 150? I am, and we are heading downtown. Oh, yes, you are? Okay. We are, because we live only four blocks from Parliament, so oh, okay. we're going to be kind of... We live just near Bronson, so we're going to be boxed in. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go on the hill. And, and you're just gonna you're gonna walk. You're gonna get some yep. exercise, I'm yep. sure. Yes. <laughs> you wouldn't want to try to drive four blocks away in that craziness this weekend, right? Yes, I went by it this morning, and all <laughs> the, the it, it's huge the stage. So I yeah. encourage people to go. All four hundred thousand, five hundred. It's gonna be crazy. Bono's coming, so you know. I heard that. Bono what time? The uh, they're gonna be performing on the noon show. And Canada Day. Yeah. Okay, I'm there. That's exciting. Okay, so you're not here today as a, a, a nutritionist uh, or a dietitian. You're here as a foodie because you you love food. You're in yeah. great shape, though, so you know what you're doing. But not all this stuff is super healthy for you, right? No, it's a chef charcuterie board. Okay. And why I decided to bring this on is because yes, I'm a dietitian, and it's not only about nutrition all the time. And with Canada 150, I said let's celebrate food, and I've chosen foods that are more on the French Canadian side because okay. that's what I am. That's so okay. I thought we'd go through this and I will stump you with them. Okay. Of course, charcuterie, we're looking at meats, we're looking at some cheeses, and then we look at pairing it with some sweets. Usually there's some nuts, although I don't have any on here. Okay. And um, so where do you think, for example, cheese curds? How did it come in our Canadian culture? Uh, you know, I'm going to guess it has something to do with, with the creation of uh, milk, and obviously because there's milk in there, but like they were creating cheese, maybe it <laughs> fermented too long, or even if that's the word, and it just sort of looked like, oh, that doesn't look right, but then let's try it out, tasty it, times. It was, exactly. So is it, does that mean, is it, it was a even surplus, close? a surplus of milk in the 1950s, and then all of a sudden they said, let's make some cheese with this surplus, and then this was a byproduct. Okay. So you are right, they just said, oh, and let's taste it, and yeah. it tasted really good, and yeah. then it got on poutine somehow. Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole other creation, right? And remember, they have to squeak in your teeth. They then do. you know it's freshness. Okay. So then everybody can try them when we're done here. Of course, and then they can all see if they lovely squeeze. volunteers, yes. And then over here we have some Oka cheese. And this is okay. from Oka, Quebec, which okay. is just not you know an hour drive from here. Yeah. And it was the Roman Catholic monks wanted to raise funds for the monastery. And they made this cheese back, I don't know the date on that exactly, but a long time ago. And still to this day, you can go to Oka and have... Very stinky cheese, but very good cheese. The stinkier, it, the better, though, right? It, it is, it is. <laughs> so I do have it in a Ziploc when I leave, so, yeah. uh, so it doesn't stink up the whole place here. Okay. And you're usually nice to pair it with some fruit. And here we have les bleuets de Saint-Jean. Okay. And those are the little wild blueberries in the Quebec region. And we enjoy them uh, usually in August. And this is some jam. And I got some dehydrated ones because I don't have the fresh ones right now. Okay. So this is, again, a culinary delicacy. Here we have Montreal smoked meat. Oh, that's good stuff. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so it came to Canada by the Jewish settlers in the 1930s. And, of course, we pair it with dill pickles. That came in Canada in 1850, no, in 1897 or okay. something like that. Before sorry, the sorry, turn what of the did century. pickles did? Yes. Really? And we're the largest producers of pickles. And it, they came from the European settlers there. It's true because if you look at the picture of John A. Macdonald and all our fathers of confederation. Got a pickle? Yeah, they're signing the paper with like a pickle. No. Oh, yeah, for sure. Really? I'm going to no. check that now. No. So, of course, we put the smoked meat and rye bread also comes from our Jewish settlers. So, the rye bread with the mustard, the smoked meat, and a side of dill pickle, of course. Okay. And here, I, I couldn't fit it on the plate, but this is a Haitian dish. Okay. And this is a beef tasso. Okay. And it's marinated with spices and citrus, and it's served as this stuff is very spicy. It's cabbage. Like, if you have a little piece, it's very, very spicy. Okay. And they simmer it for a long period of time. You know, and I will. It's is, this, is this old, by the way? Is no, this, no, it's all good? fresh. It's all fresh. It wouldn't stop me anyway. So yeah. It's all fresh. Yeah. Are you getting it? Oh, yeah. It's usually, spicy. wait for it, wait for it. He's going to go all red. Mm. <laughs> Isn't it oh. spicy? I was yeah, quite surprised that. at that. Um, yeah. I got this in a little shop in Vanier, a great Haitian restaurant. So this is part of a, it's a beef that has been marinated a long time. Okay. Then we'll get into some, chat, more some charcuterie, French Canadian to my heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, I make French, um, fresh cratons. Okay. Now you simmer pork. And I did make these, and then I haven't spiced them up yet, but it's uh, cloves, a little bit of cinnamon, and some allspice, lots of garlic, lots of onions, and it's a spreadable meat, and it's just delicious. So those of you who've never had cretons, it's available at most grocery stores, okay. and uh, very much of a French-Canadian culture. And then over here, we have pâté de foie gras, mm -hmm. and the foie gras is different. Okay. Because this is, this is actually pork meat. This is actually the liver 
So a foie is a liver. Oh, really? So and yeah, and so it's from the pate de foie gras from the goose. Okay, the you're, you're looking at me like I have any any clue what you're talking about right now. <laughs> it's the liver. <laughs> Quebec is the okay, largest okay, producer okay, sure. of foie gras in um, uh, yeah. Canada, okay. but it does come from France, and they feed the the ducks or the geese, and uh, then their their livers become quite enlarged, and then they um, this is quite a delicacy. So they fatten up the ducks. Yes. And they take their livers. Yeah, they take their that livers, and then fun. they can go around. That's happy moments, eh? <laughs> happy mo well, yeah. as you well know, most of our our culture and most of our meats, well, yeah, it was an animal at one point. Yes, it was. Um, <laughs> but we do select, we do celebrate in Canada. We have wonderful foods, wonderful um, foodies now, and I think we can bring that with the millennials. The mm -hmm. millennials are bringing food back, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, not eating so much in a box. They do want convenience, but they do want real food. And the word foodie just came about, you know, a few years ago. Well, the Millennials have to have something to Instagram too, right? So that's why they're totally into food. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But what do they call it? Uh, okay, first of all, how, what do you call this again? A charcuterie. You um, see, because char I just charcuterie board. Yeah, because I just Engli English it and ch charcuterie. Charcuterie is all about um, um, what you get kind nice of in a lovely. deli. Okay. You know, it's deli meats and things like that. And the charcuterie board, of course, if you go to um, many, many restaurants now, will have a charcuterie board on their menu. Mm -hmm. And it's usually about $20, $25, depending. And they'll usually have three or four cheeses, three or four uh, meats that have been either marinated or pickled in some way, yeah. um, and uh, smoked. Of course, everybody's got a smoker today, mm -hmm. and uh, it's delicious meats that you can smoke, and then you just cut it in small pieces. And then, of course, they'll usually have a pâté of some kind. Add some nuts to that, some cheeses, and some um, confiture or some um, <laughs> jams. I could just listen to you all day. It goes out. Yes, I love this. And um, of course, I like to pair it sometimes with some fruit. And usually, yeah. when we're having cheeses, we'll have some grapes with that. And being a dietitian, I'll cut up some apples and make sure that it's healthy. This is not something you're going to eat every day. No. This is a celebration food. And if you're having a crowd on Canada Day, it's very simple. You can make it ahead of time. You just put a big um, saran wrap on top, throw it in the fridge, and then it comes out. I so it's very simple when you're having a lot of people. Is it, is it odd that I'm, my face is still burning from that one piece of... It's pretty red, huh? He's, he's, he's a it was, no, it's, it's, very, it's very surprising how hot it is. The redness is just I didn't even makeup. get you to get the gravy on the side. There. I'll have it soon. <laughs> uh, Helen Charlebois, hcnutrition.com. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Dylan. It was fun. We've got more uh, daytime coming up. The Music and Beyond Festival is coming. More details on the way.